Hello! In this video I'm gonna be talking about a little bit more about the XRP toolkit. So I will show you, be showing off the REST functionality. So in order to get started, always do click get started or connect wallet. Doesn't actually matter because if we can click get started then it's asking me if I have a wallet already. So it's a connect wallet. In my case I'm gonna use the XAM app again, but like I said you can always use any of these other possibilities there. But I'm gonna use the XAM app. Um, I do have like multiple accounts, like about whatever five or something like that. And uh, for example, like some app, I just have a lower balance. It's usually used for like you know the, all these minor transactions you can do. So I'm just gonna scan the QR code from my app, then I'm gonna sign it off, and then I am logged in on the XRP toolkit. So one thing we can see here, there's the standard overlay of the account. We can see here XRP, so, the, so XRP, we can see, see here all the other assets you can add there. So you can add multiple assets. So these things are more about the IOUs you can add for, where you can basically add any asset. So pretty well known assets are, for example, the US store from Bitstamp or, the, uh, or whatever from GitHub, one of those. Um, so the first thing we would like look into is, for example, well, let's first look onto the properties, I guess. So we can also access it from domain and email, ha so domain and edit, so we will end here. And one thing we can do, we can set an email for our account. So this data is also stored on the account, on the XP Ledger. And you can just add an email. So for example, here it is used for the Gravatar. So you can just see user profile picture, like here, for example. So that's why you can set that one here. You can also probably, I guess, just generally setting email. As you can see here, I think you can change it afterwards, uh, right? Uh, what else is there? You can set the message key. That one is important for the for the Flare network. So if you set the message key, you just enter a firm address you have access to. It doesn't matter. Uh, there also made a video about that. You can also add a domain to an XRP address, so we can also see usually that people who are running an XRP ledger, uh, they usually set a domain, so if you just check out XRP scan and go to the validators, we can see here that many, for example, have also like a domain attached to it. And it's also because they're setting for their account for their, uh, so we have to be careful here, but they don't talk bullshit. So, um, so that's just the normal public key, but not the address here. So we could also domain here. Oh, that's yeah, it's Vitsa, right? A uh, person from the Netherlands. I was just looking into it because they're talking here about it. Uh, to 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 uh, to my file. Yes. However, if you want to prove whatever that your account and domain belongs to the same person or business, you need to list. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, that's additional. My bad. So no, never mind what I just said. Uh, you can also delete your account, so if you want to delete it, you can just proceed here and sign the transaction off. Um, then you will have to pay 5 XOP as fee, and, 50, and you will get 15 back out of the minimum balance of 20. So that's also important uh, to be mentioned here. So, right. Uh, they already, like as you might know, trying to lower that, so if you just check out the validators, you can see what they're voting currently. Uh, I heard from Ripple, t Ripple, Ripple, Itin or whatever Ripple, t Itin I cannot pronounce it probably. I heard from them that the simple majority should be enough. So uh, they wrote me on Twitter since I was also misinformed about that. So as as soon as like 38 validators, so it mean, meant to have. So meaning like when more than uh, 19, so mean 20 validators or for 10 to, then the balance should change. So um, but I'm not quite sure. Though, but I hope that's correct that way. The only thing I want to highlight here is that it might still take some time. And you can also see, I already mentioned that on what amendments each value is voting. So one amendment we're really looking forward to is the crypto conditions suite. So we can see here that it's that the can consensus of 67%. So we need 80% for the feature uh, amendments. So we're still waiting on you can see the threshold is 29, so I think we need 30. So we just need, uh, yeah, like five more yeah, yes, then the feature gets activated. And we can also test the crypto conditions with the escrow. So I can quickly show you that here. If you go to escrow, you, there's the possibility of adding a condition, but those are, this feature is not enabled yet. So you can add crypto conditions here. And 
and right. So going back to the overview, uh, we've got again, like, okay, we've got here assets. So that's another interesting part here. We can add assets. So the like as I mentioned before, we've got US dollar from Bitstamp, for example, Bitcoin Bitstamp, and so on. These assets, you can uh, you, uh, there's one central issuer in this case. In this case, there's Bitstamp, for example, with US dollar and Bit, Bit, Bitcoin. So it's it's that there there's the central issuer, like I said, Bitstamp. Okay, they they just uh, give you the IUs and issue them to you from your account, but you can also send the uh, IUs from their exchange onto your XRP address and even send it to friends then. So meaning that the, the, uh, you still rely on Bitstem to make true or good on a promise that they pay you that, but the cool thing is you can you also use it independently, independently in the network. So I was already trying it, so Registered on Bitstem was trying that, it works pretty good good actually so it was very interesting uh, another thing you might want to know is that whenever you add an asset the minimum balance gets increased by five so that don't wonder when it happens for example here my reserve is 25 because I added a custom asset I created a issued currency myself and I just because I was just playing around with it so yeah so that's why my minimum balance is 25 so my minimum reserve is 25 and not 20 um, right, so what else is there? We've got here the assets, uh, we can just add them here, we can set the limit, how much we should uh, own at, at most, we can whatever, custom add it, okay, yeah, we can just add another asset and whatever, okay, not that interesting. Liabilities, we can quickly look into that, there we can issue them, but that's, it's, it's not implemented here. If you want to issue your own token, you can do that over the XAM app. So if you look at XAM community slash tokens, you can also do it online, so you go to XOPL tokens and issue more of of your create a no, no, uh, create new token. So following these steps, or also using XAM app, you can issue your own token. It's quite easy. You basically just need two accounts, one um, issuer account and one account which receives receives them. So you need two accounts, and then you can do that. And you can create your own currency. In order that other people can receive your token, though, they must trust you. So, for example, if you just go to the list of all tokens in the mainnet, we can see there are already lots of tokens being launched. And uh, we can, for example, see the Ripax or R9, R9 coin. And the co uh, oh, this account name, though. Sorry, my bad. I, I, uh, we, let's talk, talk more about the uh, token currency code. For example, their R9 coin is issuing US dollars. We can see that this currency, uh, so it, the most important part here, or metric here, is the number of trust lands. So the tr number of trust lands, so before a person can use a new asset, they must trust that asset. And that means, like, for example, the gate of fifth Bitcoin, uh, like 110,000 people, or let's call it rather accounts, are trusting that account so they can accept that. So because if you don't set up the trust lander, you can't receive it. For example, also the Ripple, uh, the CNI, so the Ripple, R uh, sorry, sorry, Ripple China here is the account name. Uh, they also have like 30,000 accounts in the US, so we can also check it out with XRP scan here and see that this account is issuing a CNI, as we can see here, and sending it to other accounts. So if we, for example, look at a random account, again, where it was sent to, for example, it was from blah blah to, no, would, oh, oh, get office cancelled though. So that doesn't count, but here from, uh, yeah, okay, let's try that one. Oh, yeah, okay, let's try that one still. And going to assets, uh, well, we've got here assets, transaction balances, rather there. And we can see, for example, this account has like two, uh, well, lots of, so, well, almost 3,000 XOP, uh, 9,000 uh, Ripple, f f so CNI, so the issue of the counterpart is here, Ripple Fox. Then we've got 691 euros from GitHub, and so on. And there's also another counterparty Ripple China. So there are two different uh, counterparties which issue a certain asset. And in this case, one is Ripple China and the other one is Ripple Fox. And they're trusting that they, the other party, so Ripple Fox, is making good on a promise. So that's the that's the interesting thing here. So it's also something very similar. I don't know if you have used ever if you ever used Algorand. It's basically the same principle there. With uh, with their own tokens, and also it's also the same with the firm network, for example. So in the firm network, there are also like all these uh, tokens, for example, USDT, so Tether. They also tokens issued on the firm network. They're using the the existing blockchain 
of Ethereum, but uh, but yeah, so it could also they also inherit all the problems, like I said, lo uh, high transaction fees, slow slow processing speed, and XRP doesn't have any of that. So XRP is like super fast and also very scalable. So if I just highlight it one more time here, if we look into the live list, so currently XRP, the XRP ledger is supporting up to 1,500 transactions per second. And if we just look at what is currently being processed there, we can see that there are just about 124 transactions being processed, like each second. Uh, oh, sorry, my bad. I, I'm wrong in the total. I meant like here in the transaction, 24 transactions, 59. So they, so they can also scale it up, but right now there's not a need to do that. And right, so let's look back into the XP toolkit though. So we've got here the signers, that's also a pretty cool feature here with the regular key. You can add another key, so meaning here I think the private key would have to look it up though. Uh, you can add another regular key, so meaning that you add another account who's allowed to sign off on transactions. So we, we see here the approach to offer is to enter the account to sign transactions for this account here. Uh, you must trust the account owner exactly. So you can have, for example, if you create another account and want, uh, but uh, from a different mnemonic, and one still wants that your, uh, for example, ledger device can sign transactions off or for this account, then you can add it with the, for the regular key, and then it also works. And there's also a cool feature about multi-signing. Doesn't I don't think it's this feature yet. Yeah, it's here, not available yet. Uh, but you can also configure uh, wallets that multiple signers are required or even a quorum is needed that the transaction goes through. So this would be rather a feature for huge institutions or whatever if they account with, I don't know, millions of XOP where it's like very critical when they do a transaction that, that they really want to do that and everybody has tracked it and so on. Another part we've got here are the properties. So as I mentioned before, but we've gone over uh, through over these. Mm. One more feature we've got here is the sending. Uh, one thing you can do, uh, which is a little bit advanced here, so you can obviously say, where well, do you want to send it? The destination tag, but the cool part here is you can also add, for example, a memo. So you can even add their messages. So whatever, like, hello, this is a test or whatever. Uh, you can even add like all memos, so meanings, so that you can add the format, okay, the type. You can add fla flags, no direct ripple, partial payment, limit quality. You can even adjust the fees, but uh, luckily only up to two. But I don't know who would ever use that, who intentionally wants to pay more, but okay. You can add an invoice, a defect, a source tag, and so on. So send max, apparently, the minimum. And so on. So that's also like a cool feature here. So I'm I'm more interested into the memo parts. You can add multiple memos. So I'm curious how many though. I know probably, I don't know. I didn't test it yet. What the li limit there is, but it's pretty nice. to also adding like a oh like like as you know it with with no bank transfers when you just can add like a text for what the payment was intended. Then the receive part is pretty easy, so I don't think we have to go over that. We've got the trade part, so there's in integrated decentralized exchange. So I can right now over the XP toolkit side, uh, exchange, for example, sell some of my XP into US dollar. In this case, it's uh, these are Bitstamp US dollars. So I'm sending an... Uh, so these things, so uh, the the XML ledger has logic for in, uh, for decentralized uh, exchange, and it's basically creating an offer there. So we can see here lots of these blue buttons here. These are the offer crates, and this is exactly what is happening here. If we would be clicking on that, so there are lots of these blue buttons all the time. So this is these are all the decentralized exchanges working there. So the green ones are the payments. So when you send XP to one address, but the other stuff there, there are many many offers. Uh, if we would do that, for example, saying XRP, I want to convert to Bitstar, uh, bi US dollar Bitstar, or I want to exchange it to Bitcoin Bitstar, or I want to exchange it into a casino coin, so I think there is like a casino, but please don't go into a casino, at least play responsible. It's no joke there. Um, but what I said, for example, is to do with Bitstar, then I could say, uh, say I want to, for example, s oh, switch that one here. Oh, I don't think, oh, wait a sec, base? For some, okay, yeah, right. And then I can just enter the amount and, for example, sell 22 of my XRP and convert it into 31 uh, US dollars. So, US dollar IOUs. 
And then they could send it, for example, also to another account or whatever. People could cash it in then from uh, Bitstamp. So they have to obviously to register and then can also uh, use it there and also let, let Bitstamp send money to your address. So another cool feature we've got, about I already explained already escrow, so we'll not be going more into detail with those. And the last part we've got here with functionality are the checks. So you can create a check for an account and uh, that account can cash that check in so there's uh so you can just create a check say where it's below so who it's allowed to cash it in which address uh also the destination tag and then uh but rather that would not work that good though because the the destination they they must cash a check in so i would go have to go to my another account and then say yes i want to cash it in so i'm not showing that off right now but it's, it's very simple, so just enter this nation tag, say how much XOP you will allow the person, so for example you give it an upper limit of 10, the person can say how many XOP the person wants to withdraw. So you can see the maximum amount, you can print out a check for 100 XOP for example, and another person is then allowed to, to uh, specify how much XOP they actually want to withdraw. And then cash it in, then it gets immediately sent to their account. Uh, so if we would look one last time on the XOPL and on the uh, whatever payment types I guess. Okay, I am right now using the VPI so I'm going directly onto the XOPL because I don't want to do the capture there. We go and learn an overview. Uh, oh, wait a second, just have to get more familiar with the website again. So there was a view, get technical or something like that. Okay, learn more probably, and then there's the get technical, isn't there? Get technical, there it is. Yes, now we're on the side where I wanted to go. And there are the, let's go shortly one last time to the payment types. So that's an interesting part there because they're all the concepts. So direct payments, direct XRP payments are the simplest way. So that's that's the simple stuff we've got here with payments. So if we just look into that, it's the green, the green ones, these are just payments. Then the more interesting ones are, I will put it there, uh, cross-currency payments. So th you can really detect those, I think. Uh, so there, there is a website which is doing that, but because it all happens quickly, it's like utility scan, I think. I think it's utility scan. Yes, I think those, those this website, like, yeah, they ch they're checking for on-demand liquidity, like the one, one of the core products they offer. So on this website, you can like see, so there is like lots of interaction between the US and the Philippines. So you can see what it was sent like, uh, in the, or, or you can see it on the dates and how much on demand liquidity was being used there. But apparently this sh seems to work like quite a lot there. You can see like, so you can see the trading per US dollar to Philippine, I guess US dollar or whatever they have, I don't know the currency yet. And also quickly check it out. They have the, oh, the Philippine P peso, yeah. My bad, okay. And right, so you can see here the trading pairs and how much volume there is. So there's also a website for doing that. So we've got checks, I've showed you those. So there are not that many check transactions right now. So we would have to check the color. So green is offer trade, uh, blue is offer trade, orange is offer cancel, green is payment. And now we would have to look for the other colors. I think there was also one like whatever, purple, whatever. Um, but like I said, the chances are right now pretty low that we randomly see that. So for checks, escrow, partial payment, and also the payment channels. So meaning like with the issued currencies. So we first have to set up the trust line. So yes. Right, so this was it for today. I hope it was informative as always. So I was explaining the entire XP toolkit basically. You can also, if you're not a, not completely understand it, there is a part about the documentation. So it's also, so the, the makers are Tovo Labs. So you can just check out the documentation on the website. So if you just enter XP toolkit documentation, and right, they on some, Somewhere there, you've got here docs or something like that. I think get all well, documentation there. So there, they're also explaining how it works basically. If you're not quite sure how it works, so there are also tutorials on that where you show everything off basically. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment in the comment section, and see you next time.